Yo, yo, yo. What up, soup? <laughs> You're such a trip, dude. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Happy Tuesday, man. Happy Tuesday. Um, Hope everybody's doing well. Hope you had a good uh, night after ending the stream. And uh, I know we got, we got another day, baby. We got another day. Um, so we've got, uh, video gaming news for today, February 7th, coming up in just a moment. And, uh, it's a bit of a wonky schedule today. So, um, I have a, a, a quick appointment that I have to hit in between the news segment and, uh, and starting gameplay today. So the stream will go down for just a bit, probably somewhere around 45 minutes to an hour. Um, it's unusual. This is not the way it usually works. Normally I have all my, uh, life type appointments and things like that set up for Wednesdays because Wednesdays are, are days that the uh, stream's down so that I can take care of that kind of stuff. It was just, it's one of those wonky things that it, it had to be done on a Tuesday. So, um, it won't take very long. We'll get the news done. As soon as uh, the news is finished, I'll take, uh, the stream down. I'll, we'll go offline for just a, a, a bit, and um, I will uh, go take care of my, my thing. And then uh, as soon as I get back, dude, we'll start playing Fallout New Vegas, okay? So just be aware that uh, it is going to be a bit weird because there's going to be a break in the stream, uh, which doesn't usually happen. But we will be uh, still here uh, our, most of the day, okay? Just a quick break. So, um, again, hope everybody's doing great. Let's go ahead and do what we do, baby. Let's get in here and do... Video gaming news for today, February 6th, and we'll see what we can find uh, new to dive into in the world of uh, video games. Cool? Let's go. Let's do it. Zoop. Soup's already cooking this morning. Um, I already have an article up. When is the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth State of Play? That's from our buddy Soup. So, uh, that actually happens today. But, it will be happening late today. Uh, quite a bit, uh, at least an hour or two after I normally end the stream. So, we'll recap this. We'll recap this tomorrow, or on Thursday, I mean. But uh, I'll I'll make sure everybody's aware when this is going to happen, so you can watch it live. Okay. Um, we've talked about this. Microsoft is now also reportedly considering bringing Gears of War to PlayStation. Uh, it, look, I'm not going to bring this up. Let's just hash this out right now. Yesterday we talked about Starfield is apparently being rumored to be coming to. Uh, PlayStation, right? And that's not all that much of a surprise. After we had heard that first party games for Xbox are going to start hitting other platforms. We've seen Sea of Thieves already been been announced to be hitting other platforms. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush, things like that. So it, it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody to hear that Microsoft is branching out into their first party games and, and releasing these titles onto other platforms. This is their new strategy, okay? That's what this is. So, uh, expect it. Expect first-party uh, Microsoft and Xbox games to be hitting uh, other platforms, all right? It, it is what's going to happen. So, um, we'll see what the entire lineup will be for their first push of this sometime soon, but they're continuing to add titles to it. And... Um, it shouldn't be a surprise to people at this point. We fleshed it out yesterday. I'll probably have a video for YouTube uh, regarding my sentiments about it. Uh, we fleshed it out very well yesterday. And what I think about it and why I think it's a, a smart play for Xbox, you know. Um, sometime soon. Sometime soon. I'm dealing with a lot of stuff right now. I'm very busy. But I will try to get it taken care of fairly soon to get put on the YouTube channel, okay. Uh, Xbox becomes a bone, like... Expo, <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Oh, dude. So, it, 
if that's the way, so then it would be give a PlayStation dog an X bone. Is that what? Yeah. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> Dude, here we go. <laughs> oh, bro. Your trip, dude. How's your day been so far, Soup? Yeah, they are. I already talked about this yesterday. Yeah, Microsoft is changing things in the in the console war. It's easier for them to do this though. Downloading foam stars? No, bro. Don't support that AI crap. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. No. No. Uh, RE3 remake. One of three leaked Xbox Game Pass titles for February. Let's take a look at that. That's not true. Game is game. That's not true. That's like saying that all soup is, is, is equal soup. You know what I mean? When Nintendo, you know. Let me get me started on this. You know. <laughs> Woo wee. Sorry. Two days till Helldivers uh, 2 drops. I'm interested in how good that game's going to be. Alan Wake 2 is trash, dude. The game was terrible. I would actually probably promote Avatar Frontiers of Pandora before I would promote Alan Wake 2 from what I've heard about Avatar. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> You're out of your mind. They never said that. Give me that quote. Where's that quote at? Give me that quote. Give me that quote, dude. It was exclusive. There are a lot of games that are exclusive to begin with, though. That doesn't mean that, that you know, that they said they'll never bring it to another platform. Just like the PC side of the game. A lot of games are, are, are exclusive to... Let's see it. So, here, here's the thing. Starfield will not launch on PS5 and expect it to likely never release on Sony's console. This is not a quote from Microsoft, Doug. This is not a quote from Microsoft. This is this is Radio Times saying this. Starfield is an Xbox exclusive. It has been confirmed. 
they were never expecting it to release on Sony's console because it is an Xbox exclusive. Now, this is not Microsoft saying this. There's a big difference, dude. Now, if you can get me a quote... Hold on. Well, we already knew about this too. We knew why they bought a uh, Bethesda. They didn't want it hitting Xbox or PlayStation in the first place, right? But this is this is uh, actually the way that exclusivity happens in a lot of ways. This is what I was talking about in the first place. Uh, hold on. So he wouldn't even confirm whether or not Elder Scrolls 6 would be an Xbox exclusive or not. Uh... No, dude, no. They still didn't say anywhere in there. They still didn't say anywhere in there. This has to do with the acquisition. We've covered all this crap previously. This is not... So, so look, here's the deal. When it comes to exclusivity, usually the way it works is that it'll be exclusive for an amount of time before it hits other platforms. Now, there are, you know, different ways in which this is played by different companies. We've seen PlayStation has converted into a company that will now eventually release its games on platform, PC platform, right? PC. Um, so it'll be exclusive for PlayStation for a while before it hits PC. Nintendo's games never hit another platform. So they're totally exclusive, right? Um, <clears throat> and then you've got even on the PC realm of things where games will be exclusive to maybe like being contracted to Epic. And they'll be exclusive to Epic for, you know, six months to a year before they'll ever hit any other PC platform. Exclusivity is a deal that doesn't mean it won't ever hit any other platform necessarily. It just means to begin with, one platform will have the exclusive rights to it for a certain amount of time, right? So, um, we got to be careful about putting words, you know, misinformation putting words into companies' mouths and stuff when that's not necessarily what they've ever said. So from the point of Microsoft, obviously one of the reasons that they bought ZeniMax in the first place was they wanted to make sure they had exclusivity for Bethesda games and all the games underneath Bethesda, which means Arcane, Tango, all of that stuff. They wanted exclusivity. They didn't want PlayStation to have the exclusivity. We knew that a long time ago. Whenever the uh, you know Zenimax purchase went down in like what 2020, but as well as you know, it, it is a surprise right now for a lot of people. I think that Xbox games are going to be, be hitting PlayStation. Um, but I talked about this yesterday. It's an easier thing for Xbox to commit to this kind of pivot in their strategy when they've never done as well with hardware, right? They've never done as well with a hardware game. They're more progressive. They're more inventive with how they've been competitive in the market. So they've never said they wouldn't ever. People just didn't ever expect it. 
people never expected it. When you hear Xbox exclusive, you don't ex- expect an Xbox exclusive first party title to hit PlayStation and vice versa. You don't expect PlayStation first party titles to hit. So it's not that they ever said it wouldn't. <laughs> it's just that people take it for granted that it won't happen, right? So now if, if there's an actual quote, which I haven't seen yet, it's one of those things that just is like almost an, an unwritten rule, which is why I understand where you're coming from. It's almost like an unwritten rule, but they're pivoting away, right? Um, and again, it's an easier thing for Xbox to do this than, than PlayStation and Nintendo for sure. Absolutely. No doubt. But we've known for a while, they've been asked for quite some time, even before all this was coming out about them releasing their first party games on PlayStation and stuff like that, about what the case would be with Elder Scrolls 6. And they have been very mum about it. You know what I mean? Um, They they don't, they don't, they didn't want to uh, address it. They've been very vague, saying, well, we're, we're not really going to say whether or not it'll be exclusive, you know? We've known that for a long time. And I think it's pretty safe to say at this point, this is what you should expect. You should expect from Xbox, um, it will, but not initially. It's going to be exclusive to Xbox to begin with. They're still going to play that game. Because, look, no, 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 nope. So, so this is the thing. They're they're still going to be playing the game of pulling people into their platform and pulling people into their services. So, what this means is they're still going to be playing the exclusive game. It's just they're going to be much quicker and nicer about giving other platform players um, access to their titles as well. So. No, that's not true. Their plat- You're talking about their hardware, maybe. Their platform as a whole is absolutely not dead. Xbox is alive and well. Their subscription service is huge. Their services are massive. Their, their PC platform is huge. What they, what they provide for people for PC, uh, playing games on PC and stuff like that also, you know, just inherently because of Windows and stuff. Um, so, when you're talking about the hardware side of things, obviously they've conceded to losing, you know, the, the, the console war on the hardware side of things. But their platform, when you're talking about a, a platform as a whole... It's not just the hardware. It's everything they offer. And Xbox has a lot more to offer than just hardware. And the biggest thing they've had for the longest time now is their subscription service. That is a huge, huge thing for them. And they're still going to be uh, trying to pull in as many subscribers as possible to their subscription service. And their subscription service is still going to offer day one Xbox releases that other platforms aren't going to have. So, like Elder Scrolls. Elder Scrolls is not going to release day one on PlayStation. It won't happen. It'll be on Xbox. And for a period of time, from day one release, this is what I truly think this is the way it'll go down. For for day one releases, if you want to play a game, you'll have to play it on Xbox's platform. Whatever platform that may be, it'll have to be Xbox. And then six months to a year down the road, you'll be able to get it on other platforms. But it'll still be a play for exclusivity for a limited amount of time. But it won't be like Xbox is going, okay, every time we release a a first-party proprietary game, it's going to immediately hit all other platforms as well. That's not the way this is working. That's not the way this is working. So people that think that that's the way this is happening, it's not. It's not. They're just being nicer about the fact that they're giving access to their their first-party titles down the road. 
is what it is. Well, I talked about this yesterday also, Soup. So I haven't, you know, I I agree that I think PlayStation has always had better exclusives than Xbox has, right? What up, Reject? What it do? What it do, bruh? But, again, this is something you have to understand as well. This is only going to be the fourth year that Microsoft has owned ZeniMax. You know how long it takes to make games, right? You know how long it takes to make AAA games. This is only the fourth year that Microsoft has owned ZeniMax, which means the fourth year that they've owned Bethesda, the fourth year that they've owned uh, Tango, the fourth year that they've owned Arcane. This is also the first year that they've owned Blizzard. This is the first year that they've owned Activision. You know what I mean? Um, so... When you're talking, like, five minutes to make a game, yeah. a triple-A game, right, right. What up, Pinky? So, so, now, now, I would actually say that it used to be more like three to five years. Triple-A games are actually taking longer than they ever used to. A lot of triple-A games are actually, I mean, Soup, how long did it take them to make GTA 6, buddy? Generate game button in chat. <laughs> you know? So, okay. So, on average, tri AAA games used to be about three to five years. That timeline has, has now gone up a little bit to about five to six to five to seven years for a AAA game quite often. It's not always that high, but the baseline average is a, a little bit over five years for making a AAA game now. Now, when you take into consideration all these giant, massive, huge companies that Microsoft has owned that they haven't even owned for five years yet, and you're talking about the exclusives and stuff like that, there's a lot coming down the pipeline for Microsoft, right? So you're going, they don't have the exclusives PlayStation has. They haven't in the past. They haven't. But it doesn't mean that they don't have a lot coming down the pipeline either. They've made a lot of big moves for big developers that they now own. So, you're talking about the past. And you can't do that without talking about what they potentially have as things that are coming down the pipeline for the future, man. You know? Pinky, what it do, bro? And Reject, how are you, man? Three weeks. Three weeks, yeah, dude. Yeah. If only. <laughs> I'm bored at work. I'm sorry, Doug. It sucks. Elden Ring mobile version in development. What? Yeah, Target and Amazon are doing a buy one, get one, 50% off sale right now, if you didn't know. We talked about it a little bit yesterday. We only talked about Amazon, though. So, basically, you'll see this happen all the time. Uh, oh, soup. 7% phone battery? Jesus, dog. Plug that thing in, man. Woo! Let's go, Reject. <laughs> Wait, you didn't show it off? Did you show off the three-stream streak, dude? Where's that at? Come on, man. That's hypo, dude. Um, so the, uh, what's I getting ready to say? Oh yeah. The, the Amazon sale, you'll see this anytime the big retailers do this, whether it be a buy one, get one free, buy two, get one free, buy one, get one 50% off, whatever. Anytime like a big retailer does this, uh, the other retailers hop on board with this sale very, very quickly after. So uh, that's basically what's happened here. Amazon started doing a buy one, get one 50% off sale. So now Target's doing the same thing. So you can go take a look and, and see what you can get. We hit on it a little bit yesterday for Amazon side of it. Buy 10, get 20 free. I'm down. Stellar Blade's going to be good for all the weebs. That's right. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Yup. <laughs> there it is, reject. Nice. <laughs> Whatever. <Soup. laughs> yeah, dude. It's like. It's 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 a it's a it's a wanna be near Automa weeb weeb game, dude. That's what that's what Stellar Blade is. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, thanks, reject. <laughs> Pinky, plug your phone in, dog. <laughs> Square Enix is overhauling its development process. What does this mean? <laughs> Yo, did you ever finish this soup? Did you ever finish playing uh, uh, the uh, Silent Hill, the short message, dude? Or did you get too scared? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure you did reject. Yeah. Yeah. It was okay. <laughs> it was all right. I mean, it was free, right? So, I mean, for a free game, it was, it was okay. How long was it? Yeah, Steam Next Fest, Next Fest is live, by the way, as well. I kicked off yesterday. Two to three hours. Right on. Free game. Two to three hours. Give people... It's getting... They're trying to get people hyped up about uh, Silent Hill 2, you know? Is Nightingale open world? Kind of, yeah. Cannot play scary games. Such a chicken. <laughs> you know... Have you tried... Soup, it's okay for every game not to be AAA. It's okay. It's actually wonderful, to be honest with you. It's wonderful that not every game is a AAA game. Thank God. Thank God this industry is not just AAA games. Jesus Christ. We would be in such a mess. Reject, you know, I never played, I, I never used to play scary games either, <laughs> ever, ever, dude, ever, until I started streaming, and then I started doing Scaretober, and now I love them, dude, I love scary games, <laughs> I never used to play them, because I, I, I had some older relatives and stuff that played, uh, like the old school uh, Silent Hill and Resident Evil games and stuff, and they freaked me out when I was a little kid, <clears throat> and so I just stayed away from horror games ever since, not on purpose or anything not intentionally it just kind of happened and then um when i started streaming i was like uh, you know we're coming across october the first year i was streaming 2021 we we're coming across october and i was like man we should just do like scare tour i'll just try to play a bunch of scary games and dude i loved it i loved it tried silent hill back in the day outlast recently resident evils you just can't do it really dude outlast is a trip outlast is a trip dude those are probably uh two of the scariest like games that i've played actually can't wait to play Resident Evil in VR. That's going to be intense. Watch others play them. Just physically play them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I can understand it. Yeah. Uh, the Outlast games were actually really, really trippy, dude. They were they were cr incredibly creepy to play, for real. And I've played a lot of scary games at this point now over the past few years. Um, the uh, Dead Space games were really good. Obviously, there's a reason they're so iconic. Um, Alien Isolation was fantastic. But it got to a point about halfway through Alien Isolation where it was like, there's the Xenomorph again. It wasn't really scary anymore. Uh, but it was a very good game. Um, dude, Outlast games, Evil Within. God, the Evil Within games are so flipping good, dude. Those are Tango games. Those are so great. There's a, so many good scary games out there, dude. So many good ones.
When does Nightingale release? The 22nd. Yeah. Um, I'm really interested in what this game's going to be like. Here's the thing. Nightingale releases at the same time that the Forest, uh, Sons of the Forest is supposed to release and uh, uh, be a full release, you know? So it's kind of weird. I don't know which one I want to try to play. Wait. What if I put on a Quest headset on someone who is asleep? They wake up in a horror game environment. You're basically just trying to create the Matrix, Doug. You're just trying to create the Matrix. It's just a really, really barbaric version of it. You know? <laughs> Everybody, watch out for soup, dude. <laughs> God dang, dude. Yo, one second. Flipping soup, dude. Um, <clears throat> yeah, next fest is live. You'll need to act fast. Yeah, you got like seven days. Started yesterday. We'll talk about it a little bit. I've already got an article up. We've got this up already too, as well. Yeah, we we got that up. I'm guessing what we'll probably get is out of the Steam Next Fest, be prepared for like next week around this time. We'll probably, that, that'll be, you know, after Steam Next Fest is kind of summed up, it's been, you know, finished. We'll probably get some kind of nice, concise review of the better titles to come out of Steam Next Fest. And we'll try to, we'll try to get a real nice look at, at some of the better titles that that were were brought up at steam next fest for people to maybe go take a look at okay we'll try to keep that in mind yeah we, we've been talking a lot, a lot about the xbox games hitting microsoft or playstation and and uh we've got some more of that up for this morning This flipping song is so weird. Baby girl. Baby baby girl. Is has work still been just Pinky is work still Pinky's phone might be dead now, but is work just still been super, super boring, dude? Germany wants loot boxes and video games banned. There are a lot of European countries that are on on this uh, train. You know, they 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 like if you remember when Diablo Immortal came out. Diablo Immortal couldn't even be released in certain countries over in in Europe because they were like, this is not okay with us. You know, the pay to win loot boxing stuff. It was like they were. This is not okay. Uh, and it couldn't even be released. It was like the Netherlands and a couple other countries over there and stuff. <laughs> Flipping soup, dude. Well, and this is what I have to say to you, buddy. A new Vancouver based EA, EA, EA studio. <laughs> E yeah, EA. EA. Sorry, guys. It's so hard to say that without wanting to throw up. <laughs> Just 
just nothing to do. Yeah, that sucks, dude. That makes work go by so slowly, man. Play Genshin? No. No. I'm good. I actually got... <laughs> I, I got offered a promotion to play Genshin. I get offered promotions all the time, but it's for a lot of games that I don't care to play. And I'm just... I don't... You know what I mean? It doesn't appeal to me. It doesn't appeal to me. I, I actually get offers to play Genshin a lot. And like make money to play Genshin and I'm like nah I'm good <laughs> I'll pass on that yeah pinky yeah uh no nah, it's it's uh actually through uh another platform that I'm on and everything but they uh you know they just look at stats and how much I stream and and uh stuff like that it wasn't miHoYo specifically but it's uh miHoYo is partnered with one of the platforms I'm on and and they look at basically traffic and and uh, how much you stream and stuff like that i get offers for genshin quite often but i just don't care to play genshin dude <laughs> they offer a lot of mobile games and stuff like that and uh i just i don't care to play that kind of stuff dude i don't care to stream that kind of stuff so <laughs> i don't know about that <laughs> I don't know about that, dude. Z tier streamer. <laughs> Excuse me. Wait, what? Grounded two. Raises a question of if The Last of Us 2 was worth it. What? What is this? Oh. Oh. Triple A insect game two. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, bro, I didn't heard anything about a grounded two yet, really. But that's not what they're talking about. I still can't believe they remastered this game, dude. What an absolute sham. think about that that's probably some acronym i'm not familiar with when you're referring to somebody else as a tr as a triple a <laughs> all right i'm not gonna dive into this all i'll say is that i feel it feels really gross to me that naughty dog felt like it was appropriate to remaster a game that wasn't was only three years old that's weird dude and i've had people go well you know, I didn't play the original, and, and I have a PS5, so it was nice to see it, you know, on a PS5. You could still play the PS4 version on the PS5. It's not like you couldn't do that. You know what I mean? And so, you know, for anybody that's going to try to give me that kind of excuse, dude, get wrecked. There, the, When it comes down to the business side of this, what Naughty Dog did was they were... <clears throat> too lazy or too out of ideas, you know, to uh, come up with anything new to do, or they were too scared to come up with anything new to do. So what they did was they went, ah, <clears throat> The Last of Us 2 was a smash. Let's just remaster a game that's not even four years old yet. And, uh, you know, we'll just suck more money out of people. And so that's what they did, and and uh, it you know, and people go, well, it's only ten more bucks if you already own it. You shouldn't have to pay crap. You shouldn't have to pay anything for this game. 
if you already owned it. And, you know, there was just real no, no real reason for them to remaster this game. Other than the fact that they were trying to just suck more money out of people. And they were too lazy to do anything new or too scared to do anything new. Which feels bad from a, a, a developer that so many people are a fan of, thinking they're, they're supposed to be a, a, an amazing studio. It feels terrible. Shouldn't be like that, dude. Chance, uh, look into the Outer Worlds too as well. Uh, is that for reals a thing? Are you are you trolling right now? What up, Murdoch? Yeah, I knew that. <clears throat> I knew that this was like a thing, but that's what I'm saying. Is like, what what was? <laughs> Probably one more chapter of the story. I, I'd, I'd heard about this a little bit, you know. Thanks, Soup. Thanks. Um, we already knew that, that we'd heard, heard a lot of rumors. It was probably actually likely they had already entered development of this. So, yeah. Little clip animation setting was in the works ages ago. I think it's under development still. Um, I can try and find something on it. I mean, here's what we know about what's going on with Obsidian right now, though. Anything they're working on other than Avowed is not going to be ramping up anytime soon until... Well, not until Avowed's released anyways, right? There's nothing that they are super focused on uh, under Obsidian right now until Avowed is released, right? Everybody knows that. So we can look into this, but everybody just needs to know that... As many awesome games as Avowed has out there and as many sequels and stuff as people want, nothing's going to be done really heavily on any other project other than Avowed, right? So let's let's see what we can... See if we can find anything fairly current here. This was January 11th. Okay. Yeah, let's see what we got here from Games Radar. We'll take a look at this, buddy. Yeah, yeah, I got you. We'll take a look at that. Everything we know so far about Outer Worlds 2. Take a quick peek, dude. Take a peek. Absolutely. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> is that a troll? What is a vow supposed to be? Is that a troll? Because I'm kind of wondering the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> And I know what it's supposed to be. <laughs> oh, God dang it, dude. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Legit never heard of it till today. Oh, for real, dude? Okay, so do you know what Pillars of Eternity is? Not too much. Okay. So, Pillars of Eternity. These are the Pillars of Eternity games. Um, they are, think, uh, you know, something more recently to give you an idea of what um, the Pillars of Eternity games are. Think Baldur's Gate 3. Okay. But a little bit older than, than Baldur's Gate 3, obviously. <laughs> so, um, Obsidian made these... Uh, crpg games called pillars of eternity and you can see them right here dude i don't have them in my favorites what the crap is happening um i need to do some uh in you know library management here but the pillars of eternity games are amazing um amazing titles here let's add these to my favorites wait are they are they in there whatever um I, I streamed both of these games in my first year of streaming um, over 300 hours into both of these titles. Uh, Pillars of Eternity 1 and Pillars of Eternity 2. These were both backed, uh, publicly backed titles for Obsidian. These were um, like, I think what, one was Kickstarter, one was some other platform or something. But basically, these games got developed uh, in a fashion of... 
um, being crowdfunded, right? And uh, they weren't like big budget games or anything, but they're very, very deep. They uh, are very good. It's it's a, they're all about um, that top down party management, very deep RPG experience. Everything you do affects everything in the world. It affects your party members. It, it affects everything that happens in the world. And again, I, you know, I did 300 hours. These are single playthroughs. 308 hours for Pillars of Eternity 1. 330 hours for Pillars of Eternity 2. They're very, very long games. But they're very good. Very good. Now, this world that was built for the Pillars of Eternity games is called Aora. And Aora is where Avowed is set at, right? So Avowed is, think, um, you know, Skyrim or something like that, right? Think, you know, first person um, fantasy RPG kind of experience, right? You've got hack and slash, you've got magic, you've got all that stuff. That's what Avowed is. But Avowed is being set in the same universe as Pillars of Eternity. So they took this world they built for these top-down CRPG games, and now they're they're building this Avowed game, which is a first-person experience for the world of Aora that, that they originally built for the Pillars of Eternity games. All right. Now the problem being, a lot of what we've known uh, or found out so far, uh, I don't know, <laughs> dude, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe. The, 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 originally, when we first heard about Avowed, um, when we first heard about Avowed, it, it was a, a couple of years ago, really, and uh, it was there was a lot of hype. There's a huge community around uh, what Pillars of Eternity is, right? Um, a lot of people love these games. There's a, there's a big following for these games. There's a big ask for another one to be made. Um, and what, what when was uh, Pillars of Eternity 2? When was this released? 2018. So it's been six years now almost since Pillars of Eternity 2 was made uh, and released. <clears throat> and so um, it's one of these situations where we found out Avowed was coming. And everybody was like, oh my god, we're going to get a Pillars of Eternity experience but in a first person mode. Right, so everybody was like, "This is going to be amazing." But the more we found out about what Avowed is, the less hype I've been getting about it, because it feels more like they're holding your hand through the experience, and it's not necessarily as, you know, immersive and uh, dynamic of an experience as something like the Pillars of Eternity games are, where your choices actually, you know, affect everything in the world they're they're talking about how like your companions you won't uh, don't worry because you'll never miss a companion you know and and don't worry about the choices you make in the world because your companions will never never leave your side so it's like they're they're making it feel like it's a very very dumbed down version of what we ever experienced in pillars of eternity you know and and for me the and most people that fell in love with pillars of eternity we fell in love with it because of how large and you know everything you know how large the world was how how everything was affected no matter what your decision was it you know it could affect your party members it affected you know everything about the world the quests and and the uh, you know the cities and the npcs and everything right and this feels not that which is weird coming from something a game being built around the same universe the same world and so hopefully that gives you an idea of what avowed is <clears throat> i think skyrim placed in the Pillars of Eternity universe, right? That's what it is. So, um, that is currently what they're working on. It is supposed to release this year at some point. There's no uh, exact date yet. It's just windowed. Um, and until they finish that, they will not be full speed ahead on anything else. That's just a fact. So... Um, once that finishes, then you know, I don't know. Maybe they will be working on Our Worlds too, you know, full fledged. But we'll see. We'll we'll read about this and see if they talk about that. Hopefully, that gives you a breakdown of what Avowed is, though, buddy. <laughs> I think it'll still be a good game. 
because it is obsidian i think obsidian makes good games they make good content it's just not what i think a lot of pillars fans are going to want out of a game set in that universe if you catch my drift Yo, soup. What is the screen rant thing, dude? Did I miss? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, thanks for that, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, here you go, soup. Here you go, buddy. Stellar Blade will have a strong focus on costume creation. What do they show? A picture of a butt, dude. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I love it, dude. Yeah, giggity, dude. I I really I, like. I saw Stellar Blade from the um the PlayStation showcase, and I was like, Stellar Blade looks like it's like a, a wannabe near Automa game, and it's just like really playing hard towards the uh, the weeb community. You know, and the like sex appeal of these these like characters in the game and stuff, dude. <laughs> and then you get this, bro. This is actually hilarious. <laughs> oh god. Let's bring it up. This will be some copium right here for soup, dude. Soup will love this. Classic Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu games are being re-released. Interesting. I'm not saying the game won't be good. That's just, that was just my initial impression for uh, Stellar Blade. Hold on one second. One second. They've got six outstanding game demos you need to try during Steam Next Fest already. Let's take a quick peek at this. Yeah. Yeah, uh... This is uh this was also something I think that uh, Soup sent me yesterday. Uh, basically, Phil Spencer announced that uh, he's going to kind of clear the air about everything, uh, the rumor mill going on with Xbox uh, sometime next week. So there will be some kind of, uh, I think, streamed event where they uh, Phil is going to talk about what's happening, what their their next moves are, what's going down probably. <clears throat> the acquisitions. I would hope that they talk about all the layoffs they've had, but I doubt it. You know, it'd be nice for them to, to address the layoffs, but I doubt they will. Um, but the direction of where they're headed right now, as far as their releases on PlayStation, probably um, just a lot of different stuff, I think. So we'll see whenever that, that uh, they, we have a definite time for that. And we'll try to watch it together. Wait, what? Why Hollow Knight Silk Song fans should keep an eye on Airhead? Oh, different game. No, we just want flipping Team Cherry to give us Silk Song. God dang, dude. I'm all about giving developers their time and space and stuff. Boy, it's been a, a weird flipping wait for that one. Let's stick with these. 
I need to make sure that we're going to be able to get through all of our articles and everything before I have to split for this uh, thing I've got going on this morning. Um, well, I've got, so we got about an hour right now. We've got about an hour, but I need to make sure that I'm done. So if you guys didn't see the title or, or didn't hear me talk about this yesterday, I've got a weird day today. I've got a, a, an appointment this morning that couldn't be set for tomorrow, unfortunately. Usually I get most of my stuff, my life stuff set for Wednesdays uh, because that's our normal day off. But I have something going on this morning that couldn't be avoided or scheduled for a Wednesday. So uh, we're going to do the news. Then I will take a qu quick break and take the stream down for just a bit. And whenever I get back, it shouldn't take me very long. I just need to go do something real quick. Um, and whenever I get back, we'll bring the stream back up and we'll play some um, Fallout New Vegas. Okay. But uh, for the rest of the day. But it will. I will have to bring the stream down for just a little bit today. <clears throat> It'll only probably be 45 minutes to an hour or something like that. But we need to get the, uh, the news done first. Let's go ahead and dive in here. Here we go. Check out that booty. Good night, Stellar Blade. We'll have a strong focus on costume creation. Let's go. <laughs> That's some cake, son. That is some cake. Uh, during the recent State of Play showcase, PlayStation fans the world over got an, a, another extended look at Stellar Blade, the in-development post-apocalyptic action title from Shift Up. In a video lasting a few minutes, gamers got an exclusive look at Stellar Blade's story, its combat, and the combat-capable uh, protagonist, Eve. In a recent interview, it was revealed that the costume creation will be a big part of Stellar Blade, with the player being able to build and equip Eve with up to 30 different costumes. In the recently revealed trailer, players got an eye-opening glimpse at some of the, those outfits. Stellar marketing. Following the drop of the new trailer, which you can see below, fans took to the social media to fawn rather uh, lavish, lavish. Wait, no. Lasciviously over Eve, dude. Uh, I butchered that word. Uh, Stellar Blades, uh, athletic protagonist. In a recent interview with uh, Famitsu, the game's uh, director. Kim Hyung Tae spoke about the depth of Stellar Blade's costume creation mechanics. Lasciviously. Couldn't flip and pronounce that this morning, dude. I need more coffee. Um, quote, as you progress through the game, you may uh, obtain materials for costumes and documents related to costume design. There are also costumes that can be purchased in towns and other locations, allowing you to receive and change into a wide variety of outfits. It is not as if the costumes are closely related to the story, but rather an element that was included to bring out the character's charm. Or curves. I think they meant curves, but they accidentally put charm. <laughs> Eve has about 20 to 30 different costumes. Adam and Lily, Eve's friends, also have 20 different co or have different costumes just like her. <laughs> In Stellar Blade, the goal is to allow the player to express all the things a female character can do when wielding a sword. Whatever that means, it's about moving fast and unleashing devastating attacks upon en enemies in a post-apocalyptic, semi-open world. It look, I mean, l let's be fair here. Several outfits will be made exclusively available as a pre-order bonus, and the rest will need to be made or bought in the game. There should be quite a diverse wardrobe available, but let's not beat around the bush here. They're almost all designed with the sole mission of accentuating Eve in as many ways possible. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. Let, like, yo, this is not like a, a one-off here. You know, even her companion, too. The, you'll see in the trailer. They're, they're very scantily cl clothed, right? I mean, this is this is what's always so funny about these like these games that are about uh, getting these action-based characters fighting and stuff, and then it's like, oh uh, yeah, you you got uh, it, this was always a meme for this has been a meme in the, the gaming industry for a long time now too. It was a huge one for like a game um, that we played last year, uh, Lost Ark. It was like. Uh, for a lot of the female characters, the 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 more it was almost like the more armor you got on a piece of, uh, <clears throat> you know, clothing or something, it was like the less uh, it actually covered their body. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, this is like kind of the way it goes. But take a look.
Welcome to the world of Stone Cake. Light. Bro, getting out of those pants was suck. Apocalyptic Earth, where a mysterious enemy called the Natiba has forced the human race to flee to an off-world colony. Players will take control of Eve, a member of the Seventh Airborne Squad. Her mission is to like, tell me, tell me that's doing a lot for the, uh, the you know protection of of her out fighting. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All we must do is complete the mission. While I love most it. of the Seventh Airborne Squad is lost during their descent from the colony, Eve soon meets two new companions. Adam, born on Earth, like is in pursuit of an energy source step. called Hypersound. Make sure to stay cautious. That's where the Alpha and AT by is. So this must be eight or seven. Lily, a member of the Fifth Airborne Squad, provides engineering support. Lily Artemis the second. Then I can be your engineering support. She puts her technical knowledge to use by upgrading Eve's equipment throughout the game. Here, done. Something does feel different. Probably you got a wedgie from how tight that flipping suit is. <laughs> this is Zion. <laughs> a city built underneath the wasteland by the last human survivors on Earth. <laughs> Eve is called Angel by the survivors and is an object of both awe and fear. Perfect, dude. Perfect, PG. Yeah, dude. Yeah. We need more women first, protagonists. <laughs> as Eve shows a commitment to rebuilding the city. Asking you shall receive. <laughs> I see we have guests. We got you, fam. <laughs> the survivors will sometimes ask Eve for help. Please save my younger sister. <laughs> Wait right here. God dang you. Oh my god. Their requests will often lead her to the wasteland and the great desert. <laughs> That's a <little> funny, bro. <laughs> this place has been overrun by Natibas. <laughs> and I'm telling you, dude, if she actually robots. wore some armor, <laughs> she might have been okay there. Oh so god. In a place like this, you'll occasionally find supply stations set up by previous airborne squads. It spots. just works. Hot tower. At each camp, Eve can purchase various consumable items. Acquire new skills. Like, look at that. <laughs> what is she wearing? Upgrade equipment <laughs> and more. She can also she had like well nothing on, dude. Her I'm telling you, man. The more AC you have in this game, the less you're gonna be wearing, dude. Eve will often encounter people in need and other non-human beings who may need her help. Quest your assistance. Whether to assist or ignore them is entirely up to the player. On her journey to defeat the Elder Natiba, Eve will sometimes encounter hostile survivors or. That's a dope looking animal. Something worse. Eve, what are you going to do after you defeat the Alpha Nitiba? All airborne squad members exist for one sole purpose. You mean the extinction of all Natibas? Right? To think that the point of your existence is to snuff out another species. It is not an easy fight. It's fine. I can do this alone. It won't be easy. Angel, that's the unofficial name for members of the EVE Airborne Squad. I can feel the hatred, but I, I like cannot that old man. feel He's cool. the source. I will find it. And I will make it pay. Open it! It's windy! Oh, 
These kinds of games always make me wonder, though, about like how how good the fighting system will feel. You know, the combat. So, how good will the combat system feel? Is it gonna feel meh and just like repetitive and and not satisfying, or will it actually feel fairly decent? You know, that's always something I'm worried about in a game like this. <clears throat> but it looks decent. It does. Look at that cake, baby. All right. Classic Yu-Gi-Oh! games being re-released. Um, with Yu-Gi-Oh! celebrating its 25th anniversary, several classic games are coming to Nintendo Switch and PC. This year, Yu-Gi-Oh! is celebrating its 25th anniversary, a massive milestone for the long-running franchise. As part of this, uh, the festivities, Konami hosted a special event in Tokyo. Their fans learned about a new upcoming VR experience, putting players directly into the game. Konami is also looking back, though, as it announced that a new collection of some of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s earliest video games is coming to Nintendo Switch and PC. Details were scarce on which games will be included, but a few of the details are incredibly exciting for longtime fans. Um... <clears throat> We don't know many specifics about the early days collection yet. It's coming to Switch and Steam, but Konami hasn't given us a launch window, let alone a release date. Publisher only announced one game in the collection so far, Duel Monsters 4 Battle of Great Duelists. Veteran fans will remember that game originally released for the Game Boy Color back in 2000, making it a true throwback. Um, what makes that even more interesting is that Duel Monsters 4 was never brought to the West during its heyday. The early days collection will include several more games that were previously only available in Japan, making this an anticipated game for longtime Yu-Gi-Oh! fans. Unfortunately, Konami hasn't announced any more games coming to the collection yet, but the publisher promises it'll share more details in the future. Okay. Well, we'll see what this uh, brings to the table as we move forward. All right, let's take a look at this. Six outstanding game demos you need to try during Steam Next Fest, which popped off yesterday, runs for like, you know, through today and the next virtually like five to six days. Um, so let's see what we got. The uh, first Steam Next Fest of 2024 is here and allowing game developers to share limited time demos of their upcoming games to get feedback and hype up players for previously unknown games. This next fest actually features the demos of some higher profile games, like the first public demo for Appeal Studios' Outcast A New Beginning, Surgeon Studios' Tales of Kinzura, Zhao, and Mint Rocket's Wake Runners. That's Dave the Diver, right? Isn't Mint Rocket, uh, the, aren't they the ones that did a Dave the Diver? Pretty positive. Um, the true beauties of Steam Next Fest are the more experimental titles that tend to fly under the radar, though. Uh, with hundreds of demos available to play, it's tough to spot the games that are worth your time. Played a lot of Steam Next Fest demos ahead of the event's kickoff this year. The following six, six games stood out as the cream of the crop. From experimental narrative games to exhilarating titles focused on few core engaging gameplay hooks, these are the Steam Next Fest February edition demos you should check out. In Indica see this what the crap <laughs> that looks wild ask and you shall be deceived is what it says. That's interesting. As you can probably tell from its gameplay teaser, Indica is shaping up to be one of the weirdest games of this year. Developed by, developed by Odd Meter and published by 11-Bit Studios, it's a third-person narrative adventure game that follows a Russian nun constantly being taunted by a demon. While it might seem like your basic narrative adventure game on the surface, underneath those layers is a very unsettling experience. Indica is keen to highlight the inconsistencies and contradictions of a religion by gamifying it. Interesting. You can play the demo right here at this link. 
There you go, right there in chat. Doing things like uh, lighting an altar or picking up a biblical item earns the titular character points, which then cause her to level up and choose between skills like Guilt 5 and Repentance 7. So far, those appear to serve no purpose, but to earn her more points to keep leveling up. Devil will constantly taunt her, cause the world around her to change, so players have to pray in order to shift realities and progress. It's impossible to get a full sense of how Indica will play out from this demo, but it's certainly one of the most memorable games available this Steam Next Fest. Launches on PC in quarter one of this year and is in development for consoles. Duck Detective the Secret Salami. The truth. The truth is an ugly mistress. But I ain't no ugly duckling. On a much lighter note, we have Duck Detective the Secret Salami inspired by games like The Case of the Golden Idol. This title from Happy Broccoli Games follows a hard-boiled detective duck named Eugene McQuacklin as he pieces together clues and solves mysteries with a skill uh, a skill this game calls deduction. In practice, Duck Detective, the Secret Salami tasks players with surveying environments to find keywords they can then piece together into a sentence that solves the case. Uh, is it, The game is a tongue-in-cheek experience that plays up the ridiculousness of having a divorced and distraught duck as its protagonist. Also looks pretty and features some solid voice acting. Cute and seems like it will offer up a cozy comedic experience when it launches on PC sometime this year. The demo is quite short, only clocking in at roughly around 10 minutes. Easy demo. I'll grab it for you guys. Grab the demo from the main page here. If you're interested. Bellatro. Release date trailer, the poker roguelike. Winning in Bellatro is simple. All we have to do is play a flawless four of a kind and... Wait, what? It's fine, because with this mad joker, we can go mad with power and increase our multiplier by a gargantuan plus 20 to absolutely smash. Really? Right, time to bring out the big guns. With these planet cards to permanently increase our level and tarot cards to power them up, taking our four of a kind to wild soaring new heights that will surely... Okay, okay, it's time to break things. We enlist the help of the Scholar to maximize our aces, followed by the Blueprint to duplicate that boost. Then grab a cheeky voucher to lower shop prices, and finally use our remaining cash to grant us a mythical Spectral Pack, allowing us the godly power to transform all our cards into aces and unlock a truly forbidden hand. Five of a kind. <sighs> like I said, winning in Balatro is simple. That looks interesting. <clears throat> My most replayed demo of the Steam Next Fest is Bellatro from Local Funk and Playstack, a self-described poker roguelike. This demo alone is a must-play for fans of traditional card games. Each counter, uh, players have a certain point total that they'll need to meet with in a limited number of hands if they want to progress. Every kind of poker hand offers up unique point values and multipliers. The depth of Bellatro comes from figuring out how to best play your cards to reach that high score as quickly as possible. Bellatro is a roguelike, so there are things that spice the game up from run to run. Cards can be upgraded mid-run to gain unique properties to boost the points they earn or multipliers they apply. Players can also buy Joker, Tarot, Planet, and Spectral cards between rounds to further modify the deck for maximum point efficiency. It's the kind of roguelike that will make you think just one more run when it's 3 a.m. and you need to go to bed. Uh, it's going to launch for PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X and S, and Switch on February 20th. This looks pretty dope, actually. I like the, the look of this. 
I need to go back. I need to wish list this one actually. Uh, go back, man. I'll see this one. Balatro. Didn't mean to do that. Here's your link. Bellum. Release date trailer. Let's look at this. The, uh, the art style, like the environment and everything, almost gives me like Nightfall vibes for some reason. I don't know what it is. I keep seeing Nightfall in there. Huh. Vellum. Um. While I thought I'd be burned out on cooperative action games after playing so much Suicide Squad. Ugh. Why? Alvios Games Vellum is quite fun. It's yet another roguelike where magic is the main form of attack. Players use quip attacks to build up energy that can then, then be used on more powerful jot abilities. Each time players clear an area of enemies, they can choose from a variety of ability upgrades and modifiers to improve their abilities and make each run feel fresh. The game's cell shaded art style gives it a memorable look as, and as a writer... I chuckled at all the literary puns the developers sunk in with the various ability and mechanic uh, names. Although it's not that complex, Vellum is an engaging action game that encourages players to keep moving and smartly time their abilities. I can only imagine it'll be more fun when you're playing with three other people playing at the top of their game, too. Launches on March 28th, huh? Vellum. There's that one. Until then. I was just waiting for him to like, after deleting that message, I thought he was just gonna like run out and jump in front of that train or something. <laughs> I just need more. And he didn't want to write it. He was just gonna delete it and be like, whatever. No more time. <laughs> that would have been dark, dude. I love the pixel animation.
Till then is the kind of slice of life, life game I didn't know I needed. It follows a high school boy in the Philippines as he goes to school, does assignments last minute, and navigates complex friendships in a fictionalized 2014. As someone who was in high school during the early 2010s, a 20 teens era in which the game is set, I found until then's demo to be a very relatable experience. Well, that is until things got supernatural at the end. Much like Indica, uh, some odd forces might be at play underneath this seemingly grounded slice of life adventure. The official description for this game teases a fateful meeting sets off a chain reaction upending Mark's life, but the demo does not seem to include this event, only hinting at it. As such, I can't wait to dive into the full thing when until then eventually releases for PC and PS5. Until then. There you go. Umbra Claw. One cat must break the cycle of life and death. Lost in a world after death, Kuon desperately searches for a way back to her owner. To a mere mortal cat, any lurking danger can mean a swift end. However, with the power of Anima Revive, find hope in death. Each time Kuon dies, she'll revive with a new animal ability to tackle the dangers before her. Yet repeating this process will take its toll on Kuon changing her body into a humanoid form, honed for combat. Wait, so you just die a bunch to begin with? And... Will the cat inside transform along with it? Adventure through the stunning, twisted underworld and follow the story to a multitude of endings. Kuon reunite with her owner in the real world before her nine lives run out. Cats have nine lives. Inti Creates presents a new action revival, Umbra Claw. Available May 30th, I guess maybe the point is to see how far you get without having to like evolve. Inti Creates. Inti Creates made a name for itself with plenty of excellent 2D platformers like Azure Striker, Gun Vault, Blade Master Zero, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, and Dragon Marked for Death. Its next platformer is Umbra Claw, which follows a cat named Kuon. As it tries to escape the afterlife and get back to its owner, Umbra Claw's pli uh, painterly art is immediately eye catching, as, it, uh, as was its premise as someone who lost a pet last year. And although its level based platforming isn't as silky smooth as some of it, uh, of Inti Creates' other titles, Umbra Claw makes up for it with a unique gameplay twist. As the cat players can't do much uh, at first other than jump, dash, and squeeze into tight spaces, every time Kuon takes damage, he gains a new ability. Get hit enough, and you'll become a more human, humanoid looking cat with even more abilities. That makes playing through Umbra Claw easier, but its tutorial suggests that completing the game this way could have a negative ramifications on the game's narrative. This setup makes Umbra Claw a great test of skill for skilled platforming players, as they'll have to determine just how much damage they want to take in a given level. Interesting, yeah. So it's coming out on PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox uh, One, X, and S, and Switch on May 30th. Hmm, interesting. Umbra Claw. And that's the last one right there, so I'll pull this up. Cool. And here's the link to the entire article if you're interested. All right. Nice. Elden Ring mobile version in development report claims. Um, Elden Ring released in 2022 became a phenomenal success overnight, going on to sell more than 20 million copies in the space of a year. It remains an extremely popular game today with diehard fans constantly finding new ways to challenge themselves in the open world. Unforgiving title that was created by From Software. It has recently been revealed by sources closest to Reuters, close to Reuters that a mobile version of Elden Ring is in development at Tencent, with a Chinese firm having acquired the licensing rights for Elden Ring mere months after the game was released. 
In the report published by Reuters, it was revealed that the uh, creation of a mobile Elden Ring title is an attempt by Tencent to freshen up its lineup of games. It was said that a team of a few dozen people have been hard at work on the portable title, but in the words of Reuters sources, progress has been slow. Stress that Tencent devours, excuse me, devours, Tencent endeavors to make Elden Ring Mobile a free-to-play title with in-app purchases, which is a common enough operating model for mobile games, even if it's one that players aren't overly fond of. This would align it closely with the likes of Genshin Impact, an overwhelmingly successful game that was created by Tencent's closest rival. There's no more information available at present regarding this game at the moment. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. Yep. Square Enix is overhauling its development processes. Yeah, I'll preface this with a little bit of information we already are aware of here, which is Square Enix has been very, very vocal about the fact that uh, they want to be heavily invested in things like blockchaining, NFT, crypto economy games, you know, the Web3 stuff, all of, they want that, they want that. And, um, you know, it's hard to look at um, a company that is so largely focused on that kind of thing when it literally serves no purpose to the customers at all. Uh, it's only something currently being incorporated in game development to offer more ways to scam money out of people and be profitable to the developer and offers no benefits really to the consumer or gaming enthusiast. And look at that, these companies and go, yeah, you seem like a good one. You know, Square Enix is the developer of my favorite game of all time and many of my favorites. Um, so it's, uh, you know, n not like I haven't had a, a soft spot in my gamer heart for Square Enix. Uh, over the years, but there's been a lot that I've seen Square do over the past half decade that has led me to believe that they are trending in the wrong direction. I think I think they still make good content, but uh, you know, we've seen many companies in the gaming industry, developer wise and publisher wise, um, get to where they no longer remember what it was that got them to where they are in the first place you know or, or where they currently are as a big you know company that people have loved over time you know originally what got them there was the fact that they made great quality pieces of gaming entertainment and um a lot of what seems like sinks them in the end game is that they get overrun with apparently just simple business-minded people that don't know what video games are about you know at their core they don't know with the, the passion that it has to be and remain as part of the, the development process and um i mean how many companies have we seen this happen to time after time after time where they just turn into something that they're no longer what we initially fell in love with them for right and so I think Square Enix, again, still makes quality products, but there's been things that have been happening with this company that, that are really, really concerning for me. And um, let's see what they're talking about here with the overhauling of its development process. Square has announced that it will be conducting a fundamental review of its development processes. The announcement was made during a financial results briefing on April 5th, thanks to Bloomberg, where Takashi Kiryu said the changes would be announced this spring. Here's another thing. Square has been very, very blatantly open about the fact that they are going heavy, 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 heavy on AI as well. Kiryu said, we are reviewing from scratch what the organizational structure is to materializing the contents of the pipeline and what is best. As for the specifics of the new system, we will announce it this spring. As for what these changes entail, it is mostly unclear, but the change was said to include processes that would streamline decision-making about the quality of work during earlier stages of development. According to some analysts who attended the call, it's believed that the new processes will come into effect sometime in April of this year. In November of last year, indications of such a move were said during its financial meeting, where Square Enix president Takashi Kiryu said that the company wants to structure Square Enix's development Quote, to ensure higher quality from each title by slimming down our lineup. Square is set to release Final Fantasy VII Rebirth uh, on February 29th. Yeah. Um, so there's 
definitely nothing wrong with hearing that. Um, having companies try and take a hard look at uh, where they might be able to do better as far as quality is concerned, whether it be on the content side or the performance side of things, is appropriate. You know, um, we'll just have to see how Square uh, kind of performs moving forward on a lot of fronts. I don't look, I, I've been very, you know, when I talked about the AI thing, I think what's appropriate that people, you know, keep in mind here is AI is inevitably going to be part of the development process for video games moving forward. But the point of it is to do it in an ethical, an ethical kind of way, right? These developers have to be held to uh, uh, some form of accountability and, and using AI in, in ethical means. And a lot of them are not going to. A lot of them have not actually used AI already in, in ethical ways. And uh, this is something that, that we as gaming enthusiasts and, and uh, gaming community collectively have to try and hold these companies accountable for. We have to call them out when they're not doing it. When we find out they're not doing, uh, you know, the uh, ethical means of, of game development as a whole, you know, we they need to be held accountable for it. We have to call them out for it, right? So that's why I bring up the AI thing as well. Steam Next Fest is now live, offering access to over 1,000 game demos, which we just talked about. So um, Steam Next Fest is popping off. Week-long digital event, which offers access to over 1,000 PC game demos, running until February 12th at 10 a.m. Pacific or 1 p.m. Eastern time. Next Fest includes demos for some of Steam's most wish-listed games, including Pacific Drive, Stormgate, Backpack Battles, and Rotwood. In addition to demos, Valve says Steam Next Fest will include dozens of live streams, offering players the chance to chat with developers about their up upcoming games. The next major seasonal sale, its spring sale, will run from March 14th through the 21st. Um, a record of uh, over 14,500 games were released on Steam last year, up roughly 2,000 from the previous year's count, according to the analytics site Steam Database. So far this year, 1,384 games have been released on the digital distribution platform. Um, Steam broke its record for concurrent users last month. As noted by Steam Database, Valve service reached an all-time high of 33,675,000 uh, online users in, on January 7th. Um, this continues to go up and up and up right they're, they're continuing to just constantly break their own record on this front but um you could you know probably correlate a lot of the rise recently with pal world as well um yeah so there you go uh steam next fest we'll continue to pay attention and see what else we can find uh, nice little titles coming out of Steam Next Fest to pay attention to, okay? Uh, Phil Spencer responds to Xbox multi-platform drama announces event for next week. So this is the biggest thing to take away here. Um, Phil Spencer is going to address all of the stuff surrounding Xbox and Microsoft right now, uh, gaming-wise. So what I would love to see is, you know, we, we know that they just fired about 2,000 people out of Microsoft, roughly. Uh, it was, I think, a little bit less, but, I mean, let's, you know, it's, it was close to 2,000 people they fired. Uh, some were from Xbox, some were from Activision, some were from Blizzard. And I do think that it, when um, uh, we were first, you know, we, we, we first came across that, that topic, when we first came across that information, I... Couldn't help but think that maybe part of this was due to them trying to work on their reorganization of Activision Blizzard now that they outright own them and stuff. And hopefully some of that will get rehired. I don't think that all of it will. We know that part of it was job loss from the the side of Xbox and their, their uh, division that made the physical games and stuff because they're ramping that down. Um, but it would be nice to have Phil address that. You know, there have been a lot of already uh, half as many firings in the first month of this year as there were in total last year. And there were a ton of, of layoffs last year. So it'd be nice to have Phil address that. I would love to see that. Now, do I expect it? No, I don't. But I would love to see it. Now, th there are a lot of other things we're expecting to see out of Xbox and, and Phil address and especially the multi-platform drama, right? So, um... 
Xbox fans finally know when they can expect an official word from Microsoft regarding recent rumors of first party exclusive games going multi platform. Um, I'm just going to hit the bullet points here and I can let you guys read the rest of this if you want. But Phil Spencer has responded to rumors about Xbox titles coming to PlayStation and Nintendo consoles with a promise of a business update next week. While uh, Phil did not explicitly mention the rumors, his acknowledgement of the outrage and promise of clarification suggests there may be some truth to them. I addressed this. My thought process behind this, I, I think it's a, a smart pivot by Xbox, and I understand why they're doing it. I'll have that article up probably uh, on our YouTube page over the, the next few days, too. I've got a lot of personal stuff going on right now. Um, we got some family stuff going on. Uh, I'll, the stream will be back down this weekend. So, um, you know, it might take me a little bit more time to get that done. But, uh, you know, I'm working on stuff and I'll get it up there as soon as I can. It's important to remember that these rumors are still just rumors and official word from Xbox won't come until next week's event. So they have an actual... Um, we've been planning a business update event for next week. So we don't actually have a definitive date yet. When can we expect? Yeah, we'll just have to pay attention. There's not much uh, definitive information about when, we're, when we can expect the um, kind of event here or showcase or, or, or announcement stuff here from Phil, but we'll keep track. Resident Evil 3 make one of three leaked Xbox Game Pass titles for February. That did not work, did it? Um, okay. Be My Jill Valentine. That makes sense. Three upcoming games coming to Xbox Game Pass this month have leaked. Uh, Resident Evil 3, Played Up, and Madden NFL 24 uh, through EA Play. These leaks come from the ever-reliable Bill Bill Coon of Deal Labs, which is a track record of being accurate when it comes to this sort of thing. Uh, it is likely that Microsoft itself will release the full list either to later today or very soon. We will update you when we know more. Um, as for those games, RE3's 2020 remake is a particular highlight. This game sees Jill Valentine doing her utmost to avoid being caught by Nemesis type uh, T-Type with a little bit of help from Carlos Oliveira. If this leak does intend, uh, indeed turn out to be accurate, you'll be able to spend Valentine's Day with Resident Evil's own Valentine. Valentine, excuse me, uh, all, yeah. Then also, again, Madden 24 and uh, Played Up. Cool. So those are the potential games coming to Xbox Game Pass very soon. When is the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth State of Play? It's today, man. It's today. So um, I don't think that we'll be able to go uh, long enough to watch it. Because this pops off at like 5.30 p.m. Central Time. That's my time. Um, or 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, 3.30 p.m. Pacific. That's the, uh, the the North American times for us here. Oh, well, look who it is. What up, True? How you doing? Happy Tuesday, friendo. Uh, you can look at the uh, 11.30 p.m. GMT. That's UK, uh, uh, Ireland. Europe is 12.30 a.m. CET or 1.30 a.m. EET. You know, it's just, it's a very late in the day kind of thing for us. We're normally done a couple of hours before this stream wise. So I would really have to hold on to the stream and we would be going for a nice 12 to 13 hour stream today. And that's just not really a possible thing for me today. Um, I've got a lot of stuff going on. Um, it's been very busy for me here lately. And, and I'm, uh, you know, if this was a, a significant, significant big showcase, from uh, a massive developer or something. I, I, I realize there are a lot of people that are hyped about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Um, so I'm not saying it's not a big deal to people, but if it was, they were gonna be showcasing a lot of, you know, if it was like a PlayStation showcase or a Nintendo showcase, I would probably hold on. But for just the Rebirth stuff, I probably am not gonna stay live for this, okay? Yeah, 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 thanks, True. I'm, I'm doing good, yeah, yeah, I'm doing all right. Uh, tired. <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> just tired. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what I'll do is um, we'll probably just recap this on Thursday uh, after tomorrow's day off. Okay. Um, you can watch it on their YouTube, Twitch, or TikTok page. Um, they've got all the links in here. Thank you to Soup 
for pushing this information to me. Um, again, we won't be live long enough today to watch this together. We will recap it on Thursday, but please feel free to, you know, watch this yourselves if you're interested in watching this today. Um, the Outer Worlds 2. This is the last article I have for the day. So, um, again, I have... If anybody has anything else to add, let me know. We'll address it before we move on. Today's a bit weird. I'm going to finish the news. I have to cut the stream off because I have an appointment this morning that could not be set for tomorrow. It's, it's a weird thing. It doesn't normally happen. I do my very best to make sure that all of my life stuff take, is taken care of on Wednesdays. But today's an odd one. Something had to be done today. There, it was unavoidable. And so um, the stream has to go down for just a little bit. I'm going to go run, take care of this this appointment, this errand real quick. And as soon as I get done, it shouldn't take very long. I'll be back and we'll start the stream back up and we'll play uh, games for the rest of the day, okay? Um, did you see this? Uh, I don't know yet. Uh, but we'll see if I saw that. Oh, bro, I've seen, I've seen flipping... Um, yeah, I, I've seen all kinds of wild videos of people driving Teslas and, you know, not actually driving but wearing the flipping goggles and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. People are out of their minds. But I've seen, I've been seeing videos of people all over the place, like, living in their virtual worlds, you know what I mean? Riding on the subways, you know what I mean? You know, if, if people are doing something that's not going to affect anybody else, they're just minding their own business and they're, they want to be inside their, you know, Apple Vision Pro world or whatever, then, you know, more power to them. But if you're driving a car wearing it, get wrecked. Maybe that's not the appropriate word to be used. But, um, you know, that's that's very dangerous for everybody else. It's not, you know, <laughs> yeah, not on the road with me. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's so dumb, dude. You know, there's there's like I saw somebody else that was like walking through a very busy city, just walking through a crosswalk with it on. It was like, dude, you're an idiot. You know what I mean? Like, don't do that. Yeah, you know, go go be some like like sit down somewhere where you're not going to be affecting other people, running into people, or or you know, walking across a street where a car is going to hit you or something. You know, like don't be dumb. You know, don't try to drive a car with it on or whatever. Don't be an idiot. You really can't fix stupid, dude. You really can't. There are just so many people in the world that just don't have any kind of common sense. They don't apply any kind of like logic to their thinking or you know what I mean. It's it's so hard to fix just stupid you're right it really is you know what i mean it's it's a, it's a difficult thing and it, do you dude i see it every single day every single day it's so crazy man but yeah yeah i'd seen a little bit of that it's wild man oh the world we live in dude um but um good to see you true yeah yeah good talk good talk uh <laughs> So we'll talk about this real quick, and um, then we'll we'll move on and we'll segue out of here. I'll I'll stop the stream for a little bit, and as soon as I get back, I'll start it back. I shouldn't. The stream should only be down for about an hour, roughly, and uh, I'll be back and we'll game for the rest of the day. Okay. Um, so this is uh, our buddy Murdoch, right? Was kind of asking about um, it, Outer Worlds two. I hadn't really heard much about Outer Worlds two yet. I had heard something a while back about there potentially being some kind of early development process behind this, but I hadn't really heard anything else. That was it. Nothing significant. It was rumor mill stuff. I hadn't really heard anything else, and we hadn't come across much, really. But Murdoch was asking, so I, I looked into it. We do have an article here that is from, like, uh, mid-January, right? So um, it's not even a month old yet, and we can address... Maybe what is happening right now as far as what, you know, they know here from, uh, what, what site is over, Games Radar, what they have, have been able to come up with is about what the development process is so far behind the Outer Worlds 2. Now, like I said before, whenever I found this, and Murdoch and I were, were uh, speaking about this, we know that even if the Outer Worlds 2 is in some form of development right now, which apparently it is, there is in no way a, a, a big push for the development of this game right now. Until Avowed is finished, which is another Obsidian game, which is very close to being 
released and, and is in the final stages of development, until Avowed is finished, they will not be full steam ahead on this game, right? That's the way this works. So just anybody that's watching or, or now or later or whatever, if you're, you know, wondering, you know, how close they are to maybe finishing this, they're not. They're not very close. There's no way. They've got other games they're working on that they're they're trying to finish up before they're going to be really uh, putting most of their resources towards a game like this. But it's still cool to know that, you know, they're working on something like this. So The Outer Worlds 2, everything we know so far about Obsidian's new RPG. Xbox exclusive, The Outer Worlds 2 is on the way. Obsidian has big plans for The Outer Worlds 2. Despite knowing of its development for quite some time now, there's a lot yet to be seen. The developer is set to make an appearance at an Xbox Developer Direct on January 18th. But since we're only expecting to hear more uh, from them on Magic-infused FPS Avowed, like I said, who knows if any Outer Worlds 2 news is coming in as well. We didn't see anything. Mysteries aside, it's shaping up to be one very exciting addition to the upcoming Xbox Series X games we've been keeping an eye on as a new game for 2024 and beyond. Um, uh, among the upcoming Obsidian games in development, it seems Avowed is the next big thing on the studio's radar, like I said. That means Outer Wilds, Outer Wilds 2 is probably still some time off, even after its reveal back in 2021. That's not all Obsidian has going on, though. With the studio having found success in 2022, releases Pentiment and Grounded, it's all pointing to great things whenever Outer World 2 does come to fruition. And at the very least, our hopes have been set high. Here's a roundup of everything we know about upcoming sci-fi RPG Outer Wilds 2, from plot details to more news from the developer. Um, release date. It's probably a couple years off, I would say, at least. Um, it's yet to be confirmed. It uh, is thought to have entered pre-production in 2019. Uh, you shouldn't go expecting a release in 2022. Yeah, no doubt, since this was written in 2024. What? <laughs> typos yeah um i used to i used to call out all the typos in these articles that i would read and stuff and i finally just got to where i just like uh, skip over them you know the typos in these articles uh, always tripped tripped me out i was like does nobody edit these you know and look i'm no like i'm not great at english yeah the <laughs> backwards in timing <laughs> yeah bro yeah yeah um you know i, I just uh, there's i used to call them out a lot because it was always wild to me just like skimming through these and re i read them pretty fast too but i would always catch the uh the typos and stuff and uh i would call them out I'd be like does nobody edit these does nobody do, do they not have an editor for these flipping articles they just like they're like, oh, cool, I typed it up, publish it. You know what I mean? It's like, god dang. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even a, I'm not great at English, you know? It's my first language, I'm not great at it. But I, ca I catch things all the time, you know? It's flipping wild. Um, even with the rumored three years in development, Obsidian has had a lot on its plate between Avowed and Grounded. The Outer Worlds 2 pre-orders aren't available yet. We're expecting them to go live next year when a release window will likely be made clearer. Uh, Outer Worlds 2 trailer. The Outer Worlds 2 trailer is a beloved, and for good reason. It is self-aware, well-written, and poked fun at video game trailers, riffing on common cl uh, cliches to great effect. Towards the end of the Outer Worlds 2 trailer, Obsidian teased that the developers haven't finished the main character's design, or finished the story, or finished any gameplay that's actually ready to show. In fact, the only thing the developers have finished is the title. Um, the setting. New star system, new crew, same Outer Worlds. Uh, that was Obsidian Entertainment's tweet following alongside the game's announcement uh, Yeah, that I just read. The, the uh, Outer Worlds 2 setting is taking us to a new world then. And while we'll be sad to say goodbye to some truly legendary companions, it's tr probably for the best. With the Outer Worlds PS5 seemingly unlikely, I'll touch on that. Owing to Obsidian being a first-party Xbox studio now, it's only fair that the adventure continue on with a clean slate. Now, here's the thing. It will be Xbox exclusive. We are in the process of seeing that Xbox is pivoting into releasing their games on PlayStation, though. Their first-party games on PlayStation. So, initially, this is what I would say people should expect here. And they should expect this with Xbox games moving forward. Xbox games 
first party games are still going to be exclusive for a period of time, okay? It's not like because they're starting to release some of their first party games on other platforms like the Switch and, and a PS5 that they're automatically going to be releasing all of their titles day one on other platforms. That's not the way this is going to work. Don't think that. Don't think that. They're still going to play the exclusivity game to an extent, but they're going to be much more open to the idea of releasing their exclusive titles on these other platforms not too far after their initial release dates, okay? So say six months to a year after they release, you'll probably be able to access them on other platforms, Nintendo and PlayStation, right? Um, it just is going to depend on the game, how big of a title it is, how much they think of a pull it will bring to their services, like subscription services, their platforms, their, you know, anything that they have going on that they think this title can potentially bring to them and when the right time is to go ahead and and open it up to other platforms so that they can start generating more revenue from other players on other platforms that aren't going to buy into their platform initially, right? So, will Outer Worlds end up being on other platforms? I believe it will be. It Will it be day one on PlayStation or Nintendo? No, it will not. It will probably be about six months to a year after it releases, It'll hit other platforms. Initially, it will only be Xbox, though, okay? Um, the gameplay. Sadly, the Outer Worlds 2 gameplay hasn't been shown yet, but that doesn't mean we can't speculate. Part of the charm of the original was the way it threw you into situations that could uh, change depending on your choices. Much like Fallout, you can choose how to respond to certain characters, which could lead to various branching paths in the story. The deep level of customization, not just with your gear, but with your attributes and skills made for an engrossing experience that scratched that Western RPG itch. In the Outer Worlds 2, we'd like to see an expansion of that with even more customization to allow for plenty of experimentation. Uh, another aspect many players would like to see in the sequel is a lengthier campaign. The first entry could be finished in around 12 hours without venturing into the side content, which was considered too short by some. I agree. Even completing everything the game has to offer would only take you 36 hours or so. Yeah, I have the Outer Worlds Complete Edition on our schedule to be played very soon. And it I have it set for 55 hours. That's all the DLC and everything. 55 hours, which is respectable, but that's not just the base game either, right? That's DLCs, that's, you know, a, a completionist playthrough, that's that's everything. So, yeah, probably, I've talked about this before, a AAA game at uh, main storyline, 12 hours, feels short. That feels short. I've talked about this with, like, Spider-Man 2 from Insomniac. Do I think that content... And, the, you know, how well a game is made can make up for maybe a lack of um, how much time is is put into, you know what I mean? The, the playthrough, sometimes. But Spider-Man 2, was Spider-Man 2 worth 70 bucks at a, a 15 to 17 hour main storyline campaign? Feels a little bit lacking, you know? Everybody's going to have a bit of a different opinion on this. I know that you can still go out and kind of wring as much time, you know, you can wring more time out of the game by doing side quests and stuff like that. But the main storyline is is where the meat is, right? That's where the meat and potatoes are at, baby. You know, and you want a, a AAA game, you know, you want a good 20 to 25 hours out of that. You know, doesn't Assassin's Creed have some of the longest campaign play outside of like the Souls-like? I don't, it, uh, it, it depends on which Assassin's Creed's you're talking about. It's varied pretty greatly through those, you know. Uh, I think the most recent Assassin's Creed isn't really that long. Uh, Mirage, I don't think Mirage is very long, honestly. Yeah, it does depend. I think it depends. Um, you know, so, I think to everybody, that's one of the things I've been promoting people to take a look at a lot here recently is, you know, for the amount of money that you're 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 kind of being prompted to spend by these companies on a AAA title, uh, as in relation to how much time you're 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 um, 
going to maybe be getting just out of the main storyline, is that worth it? You know, everybody's going to feel different, but that's something that I think people need to be asking themselves. Um, Obsidian could expand upon its sequel by giving players more areas or worlds to explore. The first game never felt too small. Having more planets to explore would extend the longevity of the next game. We'd also like to see a wider variety of companions to interact with. The ones in the first game were, for the most part, interesting and worth talking to, so we'd like to see Obsidian double down on that and give us more. The fact that our wish list consists of simply wanting more from the Outer Worlds 2 is a testament to how good the original is. Yes. So we'll see. There's not a lot to take away there, but um, they are definitely working on this, right? And Valhalla was, uh, for most people and most fans of um, Assassin's Creed, Valhalla was much too long. That was a lot of people's issue was Valhalla felt never ending. Valhalla was like a stark contrast from what we're talking about right now. It's like an issue on a, another side. It's, it's a whole, it's an, an issue that's exactly opposite of what we're talking about. You know, if people felt like it, it was just too much. That's why with Mirage now, they've gotten back to their roots of what Assassin's Creed always was. Because Valhalla, they got to the point with Valhalla where a lot of traditional Assassin's Creed fans were going, what has happened? Why is this game just feel so stupid long? Like, I'm never going to finish this. You know what I mean? So, th it, I think that's... there's there's There needs to be a balance, right? There needs to be a balance. And I talk about this a lot. I think that a, a really good recipe for a game is making sure the meat and potatoes of the main storyline and stuff is there for people in a in a an amount of time that people feel like they're getting their money's worth but it also isn't drawn out too much right it's a you know and i think normally a good solid amount of time for people is going to be 25 to 30 hours and then and then for a game to give people the option of fleshing out more content you know side quests or whatever you know more exploration and and um giving uh, you know, people like me that like a completionist kind of playthrough, you know, where you really want to get the most you can out of a world, double that up, give them uh, enough content that they can, if they, if, if a game player is like me and they want more, they want to get the total taste of the entire world. You can get, you know, another 20 to 25 hours out of that world. I think that's the best way to approach it from a developer standpoint. Um, but there's definitely a sweet spot in there somewhere for most people. Sometimes it'll feel too short. Sometimes it feels too much, you know? And everybody's going to have a different preference when it comes to that. That's for the way I feel about it anyways. Um, yeah, we've got this on our schedule. Uh, again, if you look, we're currently already where we... This schedule is tentative. But it's, you know, if you see right here, this is February and we're already a week in here. But I had the Outer Worlds set here, but I want to finish Fallout New Vegas first. We're uh, through all the DLC. I'm just trying to finish up main game stuff. So we're probably going to try to just finish up Fallout New Vegas. And then we'll see how we can get into maybe doing the Outer Worlds before Unicorn Overlord and Dragon's Dogma 2. Okay, so we'll try and uh, pay attention and see how we can get the schedule working together. We might not be able to play Sons of the Forest right now on full release or something like that. But we'll figure it out. Okay. Um... You guys rock, dude. That's the jam lamb I have to go ahead and get ready to go to this appointment. This was actually a perfect time uh, video gaming news segment. So thanks to everybody that contributed. Uh, you guys are amazing. Uh, always here and uh, helping to flesh out these ideas. Give me articles that maybe I would have missed. Uh, you know, I, I love doing this. Now that we're friends again, is it okay if I pet you? This dude. Thanks, dude. Come on, pop it off. Pop it off. Tell me it's not going to TTS that, dude. God dang it. It probably, you know what it was? It was probably because I just switched over my scene as soon as it, that popped up, dude. Hold on. I got you. I got to do this fast. I got to go, dude.
I got you, bro. Dude, TTS is busted. What? I even tried to TTS it myself, dude. Feels bad. What the crappers, dude? Now that we're friends again, is it okay if I pet you? Thanks, Bro, I bet dude. it would have been fine had, had it popped off before I switched the scene. Now over. that we're friends again, is it okay if I Wait, pet you? Crap? Thanks, dude. Well, here's what's so weird about it, too. Yo, thanks for the sub, dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, here's what's so weird. Bro, I can go down to somebody else's, and the TTS will play fine. Somebody else that did TTS. It, 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 it'll, be, it'll be fine. Now that we're friends again, is it okay if I pet you? Thanks, dude. Ten win just resubscribed for twenty nine months. Twenty nine <laughs> months. Bro, I don't know. Greater than D -yus. Also, yeah, Naughty Dog remastering a game that virtually <laughs> will look exactly the I same. I don't understand. You can like... take screenshots from both games and you can't see any difference. And the roguelite mode, PFT, should have been a free update. Like Gaur Ragnarok's roguelite mode. So, I feel bad. Dude, I'm gonna, I'll replay your, your, uh, TTS through my, I'll, 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 I'll get the TT, I'll give you props, dude, when I get back. I gotta go, I got an appointment. Uh, but I'll be back up to play games. Yo, Psych, thank you so much, dude. 27 flipping months, dog. Yo, I hope you're good. I feel, I feel so bad, dude. I don't know why it didn't work, but, uh, I'll, I'll, whenever I get back and I start the stream back up and we start playing games, dude, I'll, I'll TTS until it works. <laughs> Cause I want to hear it. TT, uh, Psych, Psych does the best TTSs, dude. The best ones, dude. So, um, again, you guys rock. I appreciate you very much. I got to go ahead and do an appointment. Um, so, the stream will go down. We normally don't have break the stream up like this, right? I'll just go straight into playing games and stuff. So, for anybody that's here and you're not, or you're seeing this later, whatever, you're not familiar. This is what we do every day, right? Um, so, we, uh, we always start off with video gaming news. We uh, just roll straight into playing games and everything six days a week, uh, normally six days a week. I've had some, uh, I've had a death in the family. So um, this past weekend um, was down this coming weekend. Uh, it'll be down again. Uh, so I do apologize. There's a lot of family stuff going on right now. And so, um, you know, just, I love being here. I love doing this, but there's a, a, just a lot of family stuff happening right now. So um normally we're we're up six uh six days a week every day but wednesday so tomorrow will be our normal down day but um today's weird because of all the stuff going on i had an appointment that had to be made it couldn't be set for tomorrow i had to do it today so <laughs> i've got to take the stream down right now but as soon as i get back dude we'll start gaming again it'll be about an hour a stream would be down for about an hour okay yo thanks drew appreciate it um so yeah, thanks. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, no, nah. no, nah, it's just one of those like, it's just a life thing, dude, that had to be taken care of. And, and I couldn't get it set for tomorrow. And there's just a lot of wild, you know, it's just it's just a very busy time right now, man. So, um, but uh, I'll start off with video gaming news for those that aren't aware. We go play games for the rest of the day. Usually there's not a break. This is kind of abnormal for us. It's, it's out of the norm. And so, um, but I will be back very soon. As soon as I get back, dude, we'll play Fallout New Vegas for the rest of the day. Psych, thank you so much, dog. I appreciate it. I'm sorry about the TTS, dude. But I will put that into TTS whenever I get back. And we will give you props again, dude. Flipping 27 months, dude, is incredible, dude. The amount of support. Thank you so much. I hope you're doing well, buddy. Um, my mind's kind of racing right now because i've got to i got to get out of here and stuff but you guys are flipping awesome um i'll be back in about an hour okay and as soon as i get back we'll play games we'll have fun and everything but uh until then stay healthy stay safe be kind you guys are amazing dude big love 
And uh, you're sick, bro. God dang it, dude. Everybody been getting sick. I'm sorry, dog. That that's flipping terrible, man. Probably because you've been working too much, dude. <laughs> you've been working too much, bro. Yo, by the way, that trade the cat uh, the uh, the Habs made was actually insane, dude. Um, yeah, we talked about that the other day, but I was I was reviewing it again, and that was actually awesome, dude. So good good job on the Habs. Um, hockey's back, but uh, you guys rock. I'll see you in just a bit. Stream's going down. I'll be back in about an hour. We'll start playing games whenever I get back. Um, happy Tuesday. Have a great morning. I'll see you in just a bit, okay? Big love. I'll see you in just a little while. Thanks, Syke.